From Texas to technology, our next guest, well, she has really walked the walk in service to the LGBTQ community. Welcome, Ms. Chris. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So what made you move from Texas out here? You know, I got transferred from my job. Uh -huh. And I put all my stuff in storage because I thought I'm coming back. I owned a home in Dallas. And then I got here and I'm like, this is the most beautiful place on earth. <laughs> I could never leave. And so I sold my house and I've been here ever since. Yeah, don't since. tell your friends in Texas. My brother lives in Texas and he's convinced oh. Texas is the most beautiful place You know, on it earth. Is, it's just hot. It's very, very hot. <laughs> and it doesn't have water and it doesn't have um, mountains. And yeah. it's, you just, I drive down the freeway all the time and I'm like, I can't believe I live here. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you gave up technology mm -hmm. to really, I mean, have a very varied career with the LGBT to sure. community. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting that you are one of the people who says LGBTQ. I am. Queer and questioning community. Mm -hmm. I want you specifically to talk about some of the work you do with the Eden Youth Foundation. What do they do? And you're the founder. Why'd you find it? Well, because I was working with a group of kids who were LGBTQ youth who were either homeless or displaced from their home because they were gay. And I found that they were some brilliant young activists. And they were 15. And I thought, we are missing the boat. As adults um, in the LGBTQ community, um, we're having parties and we're throwing prides and we're doing all these really great things. Um, but our next generation of who we are now um, are coming up and they don't have a lot of guidance from the LGBTQ community specifically. And I was like, we need a foundation that really focuses. A lot of foundations that do a lot of work with kids, that do kids that are homeless, queer kids that are homeless. Um, kids are in trouble. In trouble. I wanted to do something where we assumed that these kids that were in trouble were going to make it and how we could make them get to the next level. So that's why we founded the foundation so that we could give away scholarships and encourage these kids, whether they're having trouble or they're totally adjusted, <laughs> to go into college and to learn and I believe knowledge is power. So it, it's kind of like a, a gay boy scouts meets a Miss America contest. Much, I agree. I think that that's true. And so we want to help them. They really are the people that are going to change the world for us and my, for me mm -hmm. in my 60s for kids that are not even yet born because mm -hmm. they are growing up in a time where it is not so secretive to be gay. When I was growing up, I didn't know I was gay. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't. I knew I liked girls, but I didn't know what that meant. I was and you grew up in town, Texas. And I grew up in Texas. So when did you realize? And what did you do about well, it? Well, what I did was I went to the library because somebody called a friend of mine who was obviously gay a dyke, and I had no idea what that meant. And I was from a tiny town where I'd never heard the word lesbian or gay. And I went to the library, and there was one book, one book about lesbians, which referenced dyke. And I was like, wow, I think this might be what I am. <laughs> I was like, this is really interesting. And that was sort of my introduction, as opposed to the kids today who have a lot of, they have all the social media, they have all of the internet, they've got a lot of friends, they've got a lot of resources. So they are coming out 12, 13, 14, 15. And then what do you do when that happens? How do you, how do you move forward? So you know you're gay, so what? So now what, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think for me, the, the foundation was the so now what? Well, here is an organization that wants to help you move to, into college, train you to be whatever it is you want to be, whether it's technology, an activist, a teacher. Um, and we're going to help you go through that. And also the people that are helping you are also gay or lesbian or trans. Right. And... Um, and so you have role models in which to, to deal with that. So I mean, certainly, you know, you know, in the 1960s and early 70s when I was growing up there, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know any other gay people. Well, I did, but I didn't know they were, were gay. Yeah, time, right. But certainly at 12 or 13, I'd have been scared to talk to an adult about it. Right. I mean, isn't, are, don't you sometimes have people say, well, I mean, why are you talking to my 12 or 13-year-old about this? Well, I would say that uh, now in the time and frame we are now, there are some people that are still like that. But I would say compared to the 60s and 70s and 80s, um, there are more parents that are accepting and more parents that need help themselves. So I might every now and again get, get that parent, but very rarely because right. I think parents want their kids to be safe. Right. So tell me specifically what is the work of the Eden Foundation and why that name? Yes. So we started out as a group called Eden Pride Events. It was a group of five women. And what we do is we produce huge pride events throughout the Bay Area. So we do... Uh, four Pride events during San Francisco Pride specifically for women and our allies. We reach about five to 6,000 women during that weekend. So we have about five or 6,000 women that come to our events over the course of that weekend. And we, we, the first year we did it, we thought, well, if we have 500, with our first year, we have 500 women, we'll be successful. And we had 2,000 women. And we were like, this is going to be something. And so as time had moved on, 
we started to get more and more women and more and more knowledge and people from all over the United States. We've had people from Finland, New Zealand, France. And we're like, well, we have all this money, right? But we all have jobs. We're all doing our own thing. So it's mm -hmm. like, this is like extra money, like not extra, but you know what I mean? It's like the money that is making us survive. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what do we do with that money? And we're like, we should give it back because this is our community supporting an idea that I had. And I, I had, I conceived the idea of Eden Weekend. And so last year we had a meeting, the five women that started it. And we said, let's create a foundation and give the money for scholarship. Because one of the things that we all agree on is that the level of playing field is education, right? The one thing that will level a playing field for anybody is whether you have the knowledge to change the world. Right. So how do you choose the young people who get these scholarships? And how, how old are they? And how do you interact with your parents? So the time frame is anybody who's a senior graduating out of high school is eligible for the scholarships all the way up to age 24. So if you are in, already in college and just need help for your next semester, you can apply. If you've graduated and you're going to your master's degree at 23 or 24, you can apply. And we have a committee. Um, Awan Mance, who is a professor uh, at Mills College, runs that committee and has got a diverse group of people on the committee to review all of the applications. So if you're a, a young queer boy or queer girl mm -hmm. or, or a member of the trans community and you're 12, 13, young, and mm -hmm. you need money for school, they can apply to the Eden Foundation? They can if they need money for school. Uh -huh. And that could be any school, right? It could be that they want to go to an art school or they want to go to some other type of school. Um, right now, most of our applications, in fact, all of our applications are for high school seniors and juniors who are planning to go and attend college or university. So now why the name? Well, Eden Youth Foundation was because we had Eden Pride events, which is the name of the... the oh, no, I understand, but I guess yeah. why Eden? Was it this fascination oh, with no. Genesis or...? I think for us what it was for <laughs> Eden was the fascination with um, Eve, the apple, uh -huh. um, also the fascination with the creation, you know, like how that whole kind of things, and then also because... Because it's women-centric. These were five yes, powerful women. You were very powerful. And I think the other thing is because for us the Bay Area is a garden. You know, if you're gay, this is Mecca, right? If you, like from Texas, I remember dreaming about, when I couldn't even dream, I, I never thought I'd be in San Francisco, I would right. dream, if you're gay, that's where you go. Now, besides San Francisco, we, you know, mm. a lot of people forget there's another big city mm. here in the Bay Area, Oakland, that's where you've made your home. It is. What is it like to be out lesbian in Oakland? It is the most amazing experience ever. <laughs> um, there is more lesbians per capita in Oakland than any other city in the United States. Really? Yes, it's a known fact, and it's, um, there's a, it's a quotable, I mean, that was like four or five years ago. Um, and there's a huge population of lesbians there. So when you go out into the world, you see so many lesbians. And now there's a huge population of gay men that are now moving to Oakland as well. So we have a really good foothold. And one of the things I love about Oakland is that there really isn't that many gay or lesbian bars in Oakland because you're pretty safe to go into any bar in uh -huh. Oakland. And everybody knows everybody else, so it's kind of cool. In our last closing moments, some quick advice for a young member of the LGBTQ community that's thinking, how am I going to afford college? What should they do? They should talk to me. They should talk to the executive director of Eden Youth Foundation because we have tons of, um, st tons of information for them on how they can get funded to do that, even outside of Eden. So kind of a gay GI bill. If you're looking, if you're looking for a way to go to school, talk to us. Talk to us. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Right, We've been you. speaking with Ms. Chris of the Eden LGBTQ Youth Foundation. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching 10%. We'll see you next week.